Hey everybody, welcome to Jaw Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Lamberton, and I'm excited for this episode because we are having the first chiropractor on Jaw Talk. as uh, Dr. Jason Scapa. He's a certified craniopath and a chiropractor here in my area of Washington State. I think we have a really interesting discussion. If you guys have been following the podcast, you know I'm really big about evidence-based dentistry, and I think this is also important to look at some of the allopathic and body worker methods that are also available that, you know, to be frank with you, a lot of patients report anecdotally, they have relief from TMB symptoms from working with either massage therapists or body workers, like I said, chiropractors. But I think this is a, a really interesting discussion. I am really excited to have Dr. Jason on the show. If you are liking the show, please consider a paid donation. Every little bit helps us with our social media costs, our production costs. So please consider either like a small monthly donation or a one-time um, payment to help us achieve our goals and to continue to bring amazing content to the show. All right, let's dive in with Dr. Scapa. Quick legal disclaimer, all information in this podcast is the opinion of the speakers and not meant to be a substitute for a diagnosis and consultation of a qualified healthcare provider. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Tiffany of TMD Collective, and this is another episode of Jaw Talk Podcast. And I am so excited. Today I have my first chiropractor, Dr. Jason Scapa. Thank you so much for being on Jaw Talk this morning. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be to be here. Thank you. I know. We were kind of like going back and forth a little bit on Instagram, and I was like, I'd love to have you on. And this podcast is gonna, you know, air in 2024. So you know, it's always kind of like fun to have like a, a reset to the year, right? When you're just looking at your practice and your life balance and, you know, kind of goal setting. So tell us a little bit about who you are, what you're passionate about. Yeah. And thanks for having me on. It's always fun to talk shop and especially someone unique, you know, like yourself in the dental and the, and the physical therapy backgrounds, et cetera, is, is kind of, is pretty exciting. I'm a chiropractor. I graduated from Palmer uh, Chiropractic College. Uh, I've been practicing in the Bellevue area you know, about 12 years or so. I practice a technique called SOT. It's called sacro-occipital technique. And then I, I use a couple of other techniques as well. And primarily my practice is, is, it didn't start out that way. It just kind of organically ended up that it's probably 75% TMD and craniofacial pain and cranial growth and development. So that's primarily who I see. I love all your, your the, the talk with other guests about the integrative care and all that, I think it does take a team in most cases. And, you know, we're lucky up here. We've got a lot of good people up here to work with. And it's tough sometimes when you refer to other places and it's just, it's just a desert, you know, even large metropolitan areas. We're lucky up here. We have so many good people to really form a, a really good team. So. Yes, I know. I love Washington State. I, I grew up here. I went away to school uh, in California, and then we moved back about uh, the end of 2009. And I'm like, I don't think I could ever leave the state. <laughs> no, you don't miss the sun. That's all right. I, I, I'm from me Arkansas. Too, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not from here. So I don't. it's tough for me sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I grew up in eastern Washington. And so I'm used to like cold weather in the winter, but like sunny. So yeah. oh. and then hot summers for sure. So yeah, the, the rain was definitely hard when we moved back from California. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> I know. And we've ha been having this like just deluge, you know, right? This atmospheric river. Uh, recently, yeah, it's been out of control recently. But yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we're through it. Yeah, yeah. So is your patient population, is it more like kids or are you more adult based? Yeah, it's, I'd say maybe 70, 30 split of adult, adult pain patients. Okay. And then kids, you know, with craniofacial growth and development concerns. So a lot of them have gone to the, the children, a lot, a lot of them have gone to, you know, five, six different dental orthodontic consults and gotten five or six different opinions. Mm -hmm. And they just want kind of a third party objective, you know, idea of what's going on. But, you know, as, as we know, I mean, there's a lot more going on than just the teeth and that, you know, and, and so, you know, there's a lot of, I said, I, I do a lot of cranial work. I'm an SOT craniopath. I teach for Soto USA. So we, there's a lot we can do there at the beginning and then just trying to help get them to the right provider for them. 
you know, so I said, we have so many good choices around here and a lot of it just depends on what they need and what they want and kind of marrying those two things together. Right. Cause I mean, I could tell somebody, they, you know, Hey, you could really need, you really need X, Y, Z, but they're, I can't afford that. I can't do that. You know? So I try to kind of work with them to get them to somebody that's going to be able to help them and, and just kind of talk through what I find and what I think would be helpful. And then it, ultimately it's their decision. So it's just my job to kind of give them information and with the pain patients, you know, really their, their first priority is getting out of pain, obviously, but then it's like, there's kind of like short-term care and then there's kind of medium long-term like fixes. And so like we kind of have that conversation. So, but yeah, yeah. that's probably the split somewhere, probably 70, 30. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, talk to us, like we were saying before, like, you know, if there's a, a dentist that doesn't really understand what you do, talk to like me as a dentist, like I want to refer, let's say a 37 year old female patient that has a lot of jaw pain, maybe limited range of motion. Talk through kind of like your, your workflow and how you, how you assess that. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of ascending contributors to bite and condyle position. So in terms of depends who's referring, if it's the, a dentist who's doing ortho or if it's a, just a dentist who's like, oh, Hey, my, you know, the patient's mouth's open for a while and they're like, oh yeah, my jaw has been hurting me. So it's kind of a different situation, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, even as far away as leg length, there's studies that it affects occlusion and condyle position. So I think it's really important to get symmetry as much as reasonably we can, because you just never know what the pain generator is going to be if it's a pain patient. So I try to kind of clear up what I can. And then in terms of symmetry and what I'm finding in the spine and leg length and all these good things, the, the cervical spine's a big player, as, as we know. And then I put a lot of emphasis on the cranium. So we try to get as much torque out of the cranium as, as we can. So there's something called the dura, which I mean, you're, you're probably aware of. So the covering of the brain and spinal cord. So that, that dura has a loose attachment site at every nerve root level all the way down the spine. But the main attachment sites, the strongest attachment sites are in the sacrum and then up in the cranial sutures. So if we can kind of untorque that it can really have a profound impact on not only realigning the cervical spine, but then also potentially helping the, the jaw as well. Sometimes I'll give some myofunctional type exercises. Sometimes if it's, if there's a lot there, I'll we'll refer to a myofunctional therapist. So it just kind of depends if it's a patient that's referred from the dentist or the orthodontist. Sometimes it's more about aligning them so that then they can get a more neutral bite. So it's less about getting the patient out of pain per se. It's more about alignment and then getting, making their job easier. You know, if someone comes in and they're all torqued and twisted and then you set the bite to that, then essentially you're locking them into that pattern. So every time they're occluding, they're kind of that, that cranial strain, that dural torque, that pattern's coming back versus if you can kind of get a lot of that out, then set the bite to that. Then every time they're occluding, they're actually bringing themselves back into a, a good position. So some of the some of the dentists and, and orthodontists I work with, it's more about helping them achieve that that balance before they set the bite. So you know, like a, a good example, you know, somebody might have a slight maxillary cant to one side. So you know, inevitably the teeth are probably going to hit harder first on the on the on that side. So you know, it, well intentioned, but sometimes a dentist or orthodontist will go in and they'll shave the teeth down on that side to make the occlusion flat, right? But what they've done now is lock that patient into that cranial strain. So they could come to me and I can lift that up if I find it, you know, and, and, but by the time they eat lunch, you know, their teeth come together enough times, it's, it's all kind of going back to the way it was. So let's say if a dentist was wanting to do some type of like splint or appliance and they wanted to have you work with them before they set the bite, how many like visits would you like typically recommend for, let's say that same, that same, you know, 37 year old female patient, like how many times would you want to be able to work with them to kind of unload, you know, that cranial strain before the dentist set the bite? Yeah. So it depends on the person, obviously, but you know, it doesn't take a lot and, and we're not looking for like perfection, right? There's kind of a rate of diminishing returns, you know, I usually around five times I can see somebody, you know, within a week or so. And then that, that last visit when they're going back to get the impressions made or the bite registration made, then usually they would go directly from my office to the dentist or the orthodontist office. I'll put something in between their teeth so they can't occlude and they go there 
you know, lay back or however, and however the dentist orthodontist does it and they take the impression and we can, because they don't lose it all immediately. Those, you know what I mean? But some, some people, those patterns come back faster than others, but we can get a lot done in a handful of visits, you know? And I've had patients say like, oh, did you, you fixed all my physical problems in five visits? It's like, no, of course not. But I said, there's a rate of diminishing returns. You know, if we can get 75% of the way there in five visits versus like maybe a hundred visits to get an extra, you know, is that worth it? Probably not, you know? So it's just, sometimes it's just about the practicality of it all. Um, what are you using to put in between their teeth? I'm just super curious. Yeah. So at the, at the beginning I was using more of like a wax wafer type thing. Okay. I mean, we could really use anything, but you know, the more I was learning about proprioception and how important that is to TMD patients, but also in terms of occlusion and condyle position and the whole thing, you know, there, there's a lot of proprioceptors in the teeth, actually, the dentate ligament in the teeth holds a lot of proprioception. So I was like, okay, I should probably move away from something firm like that. And so now I, I prefer cotton rolls, but it depends where the dentist is, you know, if, if, we try to make it like line up, but you know, if they're coming to see me, but then the dentist they're going to see is down by you, you know, down in Tacoma, they're going to have these nasty cotton, you know, it's going to take them an hour to get down there. It's just not very practical. So we just use yeah. the wafer in that case, but like, yeah. you well, know, I'm just super curious. Cause I, I use an aqualizer sometimes when I yeah. have that's in a, a lot of pain and kind of same thing. Like it's not meant to be like a permanent device, but yeah. Okay. Those are, those are, yeah, those, those are great. Yeah. That, that, something like that, I think would be, would be perfect. It's really just to keep them from occluding and then, and then, you know, so that you can at least hold as much of that symmetry as you can in the, in the body, especially in the, in the cranium and in the, in the cervical spine. Yeah. Yeah. Now it, explain again, like for the dentist that doesn't understand a lot about chiropractic care, like how are you different from an AO chiropractor? Yeah, I don't. I, I I honestly don't use a lot of traditional chiropractic anymore. Like the the what, what most people would think of like a popping, cracking kind of stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I I think it's. I think there's a place for it, and I think it's a good tool in the toolbox. You know, and there's been a lot of studies. There's, I mean, it's it's generally pretty safe. You know, as long as you use it responsibly. I just didn't find as a standalone modality that I, I got the effect that I the lasting effect that I wanted, and so. I said, I got into pretty early, got into this circle, so sacral occipital technique, which was developed by a guy who's a cranial osteopath and a chiropractor. And he kind of put what he felt like were the best parts of both into this technique. And it's a lot more about proprioception and stability rather than mobility in, in certain joints, specifically the jaw and the SI joint. And, and then trying to get as much torque out of that dura. So it's like really heavy on cranial work and sacroiliac joint stability. And yeah, it, yeah, in terms of the upper cervical, as what you were referencing, right? The, yeah, I mean, there's like, I don't even know, maybe two dozen upper cervical techniques out there. I learned one in school at Palmer. They teach one toggle recoil. You know, I, I think it's I think it's a good technique, in it, but I think it's kind of lacking in some aspects. I mean, they said the main dural attachment is actually up in those cranial sutures. There is a dural attachment, as you know, right, in C1, C2, but it's, it's, it's the second strongest, the cranium in the, in the cranial sutures is a stronger dural attachment. So if somebody has a cranial strain, let's say to the right, you know, Atlas is going to follow that. So I could bang away on Atlas, you know, all day and it's, it's not going to stay very well if they have a lot of cranial strain or if they have a major TMJ problem. And it's kind of a chicken or the egg, right? Well, sometimes, sometimes a TMJ problem could cause an upper cervical problem and, and vice versa. But ultimately, I think it's the cranial underdevelopment and the cranial strain that really leads to a lot of those issues. So I don't have an issue most of the time with, as long as the jaw is stable with upper cervical spine, you know, kind of going back to, to, to the right position, because it's, as I said, I think most, most of the time it's actually following what's going on within the within the cranium. We have a saying in SOT is the, the Atlas adapts and the TMJ compensates. So the <laughs> Atlas adapts to what's going on within the cranial dura and the TMJ oftentimes is compensating for what's going on with the maxilla, right? And the, and the rest of the, the cranium. So that's kind of the, that's, that's the way we look at it anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I mean, as a PT, you know, I'm looking at, well, and also as a dentist, you know, I, I use, you know, like a cone beam CT. And a yeah. lot of times that if it's a full field of view, it'll capture kind of the upper part of the cervical spine, you know, and, and you'll see, you know, that atlas in that XYZ axis where it's like rotated, tipped, and you know, you know, usually flexed because most people lose extension of the, you know, the upper cervical. Mm. And then, you know, I tend to see it twisted on the side that has like the short ramus height too, where there's been like oh, interesting. More, more disc oh, displacement. Cool. Oh. Yeah. So um, you know, I do like a, a little like testing. And then I also just do like, I'm looking at kind of like joint play too, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, just like that ability of like that side bend rotation, you know, if that couples evenly like one side to the other. And most of the time people are stuck on the side that has more damage to their TMJ as well. So oh, interesting. Okay. I don't know. I mean, well, that's I'll, like, have to, I'll have to look for that. That's interesting. I, know, I, I need to do like a literature sh search. I did uh, a couple things like when I did a, a little course last February, I spoke um, to my Chicago study club, which is a, a, a group of dentists across the country. And um, they're, they're more like restorative dentists. So they're looking at, you know, traditionally like the bite and the occlusion, you know, why is this patient, you know, breaking all their crowns on one side, but they're also looking at, you know, more advanced imaging. And so we talked a, a lot about the cervical spine because as a dentist, you know, you don't even want to like touch the neck. <laughs> you know, you're just like open as wide as possible so I can like get this crown done, you know? <laughs> so. well, yeah, they have, you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm saying you guys as dentists now, cause you, yeah, you can yeah. wear multiple hats, but like, yeah, I mean, you got dentists, dentists have enough to worry about. I mean, gosh, it's crazy how much, you, you know, they're responsible for in terms of screening for things. And in terms of, you know, the tooth health and, and then the orthodontic work is a whole nother, you know, I mean, just the physics of moving that you know, I'm in a couple of study clubs too. And a lot of the, the, the orthodontic study clubs and a lot of it's way over my head. I have no idea what they're talking, you know, power chains and all kinds. Of, I, I don't know what they're talking about, but you know, the, the, the what I got out of that the, in terms of the, the difficulty of just moving it to the physics of moving a tooth, like it's pretty, pretty amazing. So then to think about all these other you know, it almost make your head explode, right? Like, oh, there's, there's more I have to think about, right? It's, it's really, it's really wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm such an advocate for interdisciplinary teams, because yeah. I think as a practitioner, you know, in Tacoma, I really want to build my team, you know, of people that I'm, I know that like, okay, that procedure's out of my scope, but I know enough, you know, from what I've seen that, you know, you could benefit from working together with this person. And so, I mean, I, I think that as dentists specifically, we get more focused on, like you said, craniofacial development, you know, we get excited about like, what are the things that, like that we can actually actually intervene on as a growing child so that that dysfunction doesn't carry on to the adult patient, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what's the youngest patient you've seen in your practice? Days. Oh, Days wow. Old. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like, I mean, again, this is kind of a, you, you'll hear different, you know, you talk to different chiropractors or physical therapists, you know, manual body workers, they'll have different opinions about this, but generally like, I don't, some people will say, oh, the a baby should be adjusted like as soon as they come out of the womb, you know, they need to get checked and all this stuff. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, how traumatic is that to be just to be born? Right. So, I mean, to me, it's just, unless the baby's having a problem, then I usually tell them just to hold off for a while. You know, if they're having an issue feeding, there's some uh, doulas and midwives and things that'll refer people, you know, if they're having major latching problems, if they're having, it's like turn, some kind of torticollis, some kind of reflux issue, then, okay, then, you know, let's check it out. Right. But, and then, you know, get them to the right person. If I'm not the one, you know, if, if it's like, you know, grade four tongue tie or something, it's like, okay, you know, this is something, you know, we need to take care of. I'm not the one to do it, but you know, you need to get this look at, looked at. Generally, I, I kind of prefer to let them, let them live a little bit, you know, and then, and then if there's a, cause you know, there's no, I don't know. I, I feel like you need to give the body a chance, right? Give the, give the body a chance. And, and if there's an issue, then we can go in and correct it. And kids, kids respond so fast that I don't, there's very few things that are like an emergency. And if it is, you'll, the parent will know and then, or that, you know, their, their practitioner will send them.
Hi there, I'm Dr. Tiffany Lamberton. I'm dropping in with a quick friendly note before we jump back into our podcast. Let's chat for a moment about mentorship. If you're a dental professional wrestling with TMD cases that you're really struggling to get it, I understand. The complexity of diagnosing, crafting those detailed treatment plans, and ensuring your patients are comfortable, it's a lot, isn't it? Here's the good news. You don't have to manage it alone. I'm here to offer a helping hand with my personalized one-on-one coaching and consulting services. Drawing from my rich experience in temporomandibular joint disorders, as well as my physical therapy background, I'm all about guiding you through these challenges with ease and confidence. Think of me as your personal mentor, here to bolster your TMJ management skills. Together in our sessions, we'll dive into the practical know-how I've gathered over the years. From strategies to helpful tips, I aim to streamline your practice and enhance your effectiveness. The best part, our sessions are super flexible and designed to fit right into your busy schedule. We'll focus on comprehensive learning, and that's not just about TMD, but also touches on improving patient communication and growing your practice. So no more feeling overwhelmed by TMJ patients and TMJ pain. With a bit of teamwork, you can boost your experience and confidence. Ready to take that first step? It's easy. Just swing by tmdcollective.com slash VIP to book your first session with me. Let's team up to take your TMD management skills to new heights and really elevate your practice. Your path to becoming a TMD expert starts now. And now let's get back to the show. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, as we're starting to really like look more at like airway growth and development of the, you know, craniofacial complex and just seeing how that really like retronathic mandible kind of compresses the oral pharyngeal airway space, you know, it's like, yeah, you can do all this stuff on the maxilla, but what if the mandible's not growing? You know, so what are some specific like mandible techniques like that you employ in your practice? For for children or, or for like pain patients? No, for a growing child. For a growing child. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, a lot of it's just getting symmetry at the beginning. I mean, really, it's just getting as much, if they do have a ton of torque through that dura, through their head, getting as much of that out as possible. Are they sleeping with their mouth closed? If not, then, then I mean, we're going to fail, right? I mean, if they're just hanging, their jaw is hanging open all night, I mean, we, we're not going to, we're not going to be able to, to do much with that. So we start with pretty simple things and then, you know, a lot of times that's enough, honestly, just get them to be sleeping correctly. And, and, you know, that's, that's enough, but if they need more, then there are some, some exercise, some things we do said, sometimes I'll have them work with a malfunctional therapist. If I think if it's just a tone, tongue, tone problem, or if it's like a, some kind of oral restriction, and then if there's some breathing issue, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll work with an ENT, we'll talk about allergies, we'll do a lot of those kind of things the tonsils, kind of the, the stuff that probably most people are looking at. It's not like I'm doing something amazing with that, but I don't know. It's just, <laughs> you know, the, very approach. Yeah. Right? I, mean, it, I mean, but yeah, I, mean, I think if, if you can, if you can get the strain out of their head and then get them breathing through their, if they can breathe through their nose, lips together, you know, then I, I find that they do pretty well with that and they'll still start growing correctly. If not, you know, there's other things that can be really helpful that are not expensive and non-invasive. I mean, I think I don't want to mention appliances too much on the podcast, right? But there's there's some like, I don't know, Myobrace is great. I mean, there's some, you know, there's some like really like cheap and easy things that can be done, you know, that can really help if if you need that, if they need that. But I try to I try to stay pretty conservative with that. And then the yeah, the growth and development will, will tend to happen, but some, some people need more help than others. Right. And so I think a lot of the A to P deficiency is what I, I see that they need help with more than anything else. And that part, you know, sometimes we, sometimes we get stuck and we do, we do need help. You know, so I said, I, I, I'm not shy to send them to a dentist and orthodontist to help, but you know, it has to be one that understands cranial growth and development and that kind of, you know, said, I, I tried to educate myself as much as possible about this appliance and that appliance. And I'd go to this course and that dental course and that ortho course. And it's like, but I was kind of shocked at, you know, honestly, I, I would, I'd be sitting in the back and they'd, and they'd be talking about some expanding device they use or something, you know, some, some, and they say, Oh, we're, we're stimulating growth at this X, Y, Z suture, you know? And I'm thinking there is no growth at that suit that like, 
I think, I think dentists are kind of like chiropractors. Like we're, we're very creative and we're good at coming up with all kinds of crazy things. And sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. And sometimes it makes a change and we think we know what the change is, but it's, it's really not that it's this and that kind of, so I think sometimes with these appliances, I think people put them in the mouth and they see some change, but then I think, I think there's a poor understanding generally of what exactly it's doing in the mouth and how it's impacting the rest of the, the you know, the cranium and the, you know, is it, is it growing bone? Is it remodeling bone? You know, is it pushing teeth or is it distorting bone? Like wh which one of those four is happening with that appliance? And I think that goes back to cranial growth and development. My group doesn't understand cranial growth and development either. So I go, we're, the cranial paths, you know, we're really good at the functional aspect of the cranium, you know, and, 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 you know, how it integrates with everything else. And, you know, to some degree with the bite, you know, so we didn't, we didn't know that. And then, you know, I, I went to the, I found out a lot of the dentist and orthodontic groups, like I didn't get the feeling they really knew it either because they, each one would say something different. I mean, I'd be in one. And they would say, oh, this, 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 I'd go to another one and they'd be talking, you know, saying bad things about the other group. And then, no, it's this, but really they had no knowledge of what the other group was doing. Like it was kind of out. Cause, cause I said, well, I don't, I'm not an expert, but they didn't say, they don't say that. They say this, like, you know, oh, whatever, you know, they don't want to, and I was like, oh, okay, like you guys have your own battles just like we do. Right. So, so it's really the, the cranial paleontologists are the ones that really understand cranial growth and development. So I started going to courses with those guys. And they're the ones that have actually done studies and actually they, and they, I got to tell you, I mean, they're disgusted with what's going on in dentistry and orthodontia. Like they are really upset about it. I'd love to see those groups come together more because I just feel like, you know, it would really, it would really kind of fine tune, you know, the appliance situation in the, in the dental and orthodontic world, like, you know, which direction should we be pressing with these appliances to stimulate growth, right? Which, and then how much pressure well, these, these are kind of, you know, right now it's just random directions and random, you know, and it's like, they'll see a change at the end, but it's, is, is that, you know, is that going to relapse in, in a year, you know, or is that just, is that just moving the teeth? Like what's going on with that? I think it's kind of the wild west right now. And Dennis just said, I, I, when I went into it, I thought there was some standard or some, but it's, it's pretty crazy, right? I mean, it's just kind of all over the place and you're kind of left with the, if you don't understand the basic cranial, cranial growth and development principles, then like anything sounds good, right? I mean, you can show a before and after picture and you kind of get kind of taken away by the speaker, really charismatic speaker, you know, you, you're just, oh, okay, you know. But if you have a filter, you know, with which to look at things, because growth doesn't happen evenly everywhere. And there's primary growth centers, there's secondary growth centers. And so, you know, if you're trying to stimulate, you, you don't, you don't necessarily always want to, you know, I'm going to say expand, you know, sometimes pushing teeth's enough and that's a lot easier. Right. But I think it's just important to like, I think the semantics matter and I think calling it what it is, you know, matters. It's not, I, so that's, I really, I don't like the word expansion. I think it's like too catch all. I, I, I'd love to see more specificity within dentistry and orthodontia in terms of what they're doing. And then, like I said, just really kind of fine tuning because I, yeah, there's like this wave. I've heard you talk about it on, on your podcast with a few of your guests, which are like, I don't know if you're, you guys are probably the minority, aren't you? I mean, like that are, that are looking at this stuff, like the, like you guys are like the one, 2% of people, <laughs> like, right? Wouldn't you say that in your, in your industry? <laughs> well, like, did you, do you know, Dr. Rebecca Bacow? I had yeah. her on the podcast, mm -hmm. she's in your area and mm -hmm. she's fantastic. You know, she's both ortho and perio and, mm -hmm then like Drew McDonald is also in my study club, but I would say they're at the, what I would consider the, the high end of orthodontists. You know, I think that unfortunately with our profession, you know, things like smile direct club or like clear retainers, you know, or like do it yourself, you know, where it's just focused on tooth movement or, you know, I, I'm going to kind of throw some shade at, at some of the dental, you know, the big dental groups, you know, like gentle dental. And, you know, it's like they have these like same day smiles where, you know, you're, you're seeing like a hundred patients a day and you're kind of like, mm -hmm. 
I, I think that's where our, our profession starts to go astray is where it becomes, you know, income driven versus looking at that big picture. So, but I am like an optimist. So I'm like, we can change, you know? <laughs> There's definitely a wave of, you know, I've seen it, you know, I think that the hot button topic of that for, as an out, as a non-dentist, you know, they like air, everyone's airway, 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 yeah. right? And they, I think it's great. I mean, I think it's a good start, right? Like it's a good, but you know, as, as, as we know, like there's more to it than airways, a, a piece, right? But it's, you know, if you have to be looking at the bite, you have to be looking at a func a functional bite, right? Not just an aesthetic bite, but like what's going to work for that person functionally in terms of the, in the, you know, the cranium, the upper cervical spine, the jaw joint, like what's going on with all those things, kind of put it all together. You know, is it a pharyngeal airway issue versus a nasal airway issue? And yeah, it does seem to be that, it's trending in a good, but it's still, I mean, I'd say like of dentist and orthodont, I mean, you guys are probably like the 5% looking at that right now, right? Would you say that? I don't know. Like, <laughs> is that fair? I, I don't know. I you have a better grasp of that than me, but I, and I think in this area, we're a little unique too. We probably have a higher percentage than most places. I, I don't know. We have some amazing like dentists and orthodontists. Yeah of the Seattle Tacoma area. And we have a lot of like really amazing education centers here too, where, you know, there are, there is like a high level of, of dentistry. And so, yeah, I mean, to me, I'm a general dentist, you know, and I, I think that you can also be humble about, you know, bringing in other people and just saying like, how are you looking at this patient? You know, I mean, I think it's yeah, fascinating. Sure you know, to be able to, you know, work together and, and work up a case together, you know, because you've got, you know, your eyes that you're looking at, uh, you know, your myofunctional therapist is going to have their myo eyes of looking at it, you know, but the, ge the general dentist is also, you know, looking at like, you know, can the skeleton like support the changes to that, that we're making to the teeth, right? Because we don't want to like, tip the teeth so much that we tip them out of the alveolar bone, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, there's been a lot of stuff in the news about some different, like you said, appliances, you know, the AGA appliance, you know, where it actually pushed, you know, the woman's teeth out of, you know, so she's, you know, I don't know if you saw See, that's another myth though. That's <laughs> another thing that happened. Like that's, I, I talked to two of the expert witnesses in that, in that case, the cranial Did paleontologists you know? are not dentists. Yeah. And that's, that's a myth. Like I, that's, so what, yeah, I mean, I, just, 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 to, I don't know, just to, can I, fake news? You know, <laughs> a little I get bit, to... a little bit, like that appliance that it was actually, you know, they went back and it wasn't actually the aga that did it. It was the braces after. So they oh, showed okay. in the CT that the teeth were fine after the, after that appliance, it was just, you know, was it used irresponsibly? All of it? Like, absolutely. Like, you know, any of these things. You know, if you don't know what you're doing, you could just, you can make a mess of it really quickly. Right. And I think, you know, I think instead of blaming the appliance per se, I think it's more about the, the, hands the, the wielder of the appliance. You know, <laughs> did you go completely off protocol? Did you really know what you're doing? Like, you know, but yeah, it was the, in, in, in those cases where that, that was, it was the, they showed clearly in the, that case is about to be dropped completely. That one. Oh, see, yeah. I didn't know that. This but is, this, like yeah. I mean, and I, and I have no, I'm on nobody's team, right? Like I don't, I don't, I don't care, you know what I mean? But I, I do think it's important to, to, to be fair, right? But so that's what I, I saw that so much when I went to the different, said the, the different orthodontic clubs and the, and the different seminars and, it was just, there's so much animosity towards other groups, but there was so little knowledge of what they actually did. It was really fascinating. It was just kind of like, I don't want to know. I'm going to die on my hill over here in this group and that's it. And it's like, okay, well, and I get it. Cause I mean, any one of those appliances to really learn it, it's, a, I mean, it's so technical. It's really incredible. So I get why you just kind of have your, you know, your, your box, right? Yeah. Mindset. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, just, it's all very technical. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I think this is a great place to like, tell us kind of what grinds your gears on, like a, do like a myth busting that like you see a lot on social media that you see from maybe like fellow people in your profession that like really is just like, no, <laughs> don't do that. Oh, from chiropractors? Yeah. yeah. Oh, forget about it. I don't know. How, how much time do we have? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think we're all critical, most critical of our own profession, right? So, I mean, you know, I mean, just to, I, I would like to see 
chiropractors, like we, we talked at the beginning, you know, b- before we started filming about how, you know, their specialization within, you know, and you had made it, you, you had said something like, oh, like, you know, like in your profession, there's specialization. There's not, I mean, that's the problem. Like, uh, you know, chiropractor, you, you know, they, you go to our website, they could treat like everything under the sun. And it's like, well, technically you're just, tre- you know, it's like the joint play. Like I can kind of see it, but it's, there's, there's no like real deep understanding of any, I'd love to see more specialization within chiropractic. And then I think, I think chiropractors tend to, I think their hearts are in the right place, but you know, they tend to kind of just adjust the same thing over and over again. Right. And so I'd love this, you know, especially like the cervical spine. Right. So it's like, why, why do these things keep coming up? Right. You know, and if it's not responding relatively quickly to care, mm-hmm. then knowing that something you don't have to be like you said, don't have to be an expert in it. But if you if you just have that awareness that like okay, there's there's something above the neck, right? That the head's up there, the cranium, the teeth, the butt. You know, it's like have some awareness of you know I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but you know I'd like you to get a second opinion from this person to see if we can get more stability in your neck. Like something simple, right? Like. And I said, in, in dentistry, it drives me crazy with the appliance thing. Like just what's said and, oh, it's this and that and that and this. And and I said, there's really a, I feel like there's just a, this, this gap in terms of basic, basic cranial growth and development principles, because a lot of times what you see isn't what's really happening. And, and I think that helped me like a massive amount now so that I can go and talk to somebody and, you know, I'm not just pulled one way or another based on how charismatic they are or what they say, or, you know, you can, you can just take it back to, well, okay, I know it's possible. What's, what's not really realistic and kind of go from there. And that's helped me a lot. But yeah. Well, and like the PT in me is like, okay, well, like what exercises or like what things can we also be doing, you know, so that you don't, like you said, you you don't want to like be adjusted, you know, five times a, a week for like the rest of your life, you know? And that's, what, yeah, I, I like working with, yeah, with T's and, and there's some kind of strength and conditioning people around and I, I, it, people hold so much better if, you know, as we, we, we get everything kind of aligned, right. But then neurologically, like, how do you integrate those patterns? And, and that's where like the exercise and the, the rehab work comes in. And it's like, you know, it's hard to do some of these things, right. If you're all twisted and torqued and your bites way off you know, you're not going to have as much proprioception. You're going to have not as much symmetry. And it's going to be harder. To, so if you're doing those exercises in the, in the, in the way that's not, not quite correct or not, not symmetrical, then you're reinforcing that negative pattern, right? Versus if they're lined up and then they're also doing, you know, some kind of exercise based therapy on top of it. It's, it really, it really reinforces all those patterns and, and, and has a really positive effect. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you like to do personally as, as part of like your exercise reinforcement do you, are you, are you a yoga person, Pilates, like what, what things do you enjoy weightlifting? Yeah, I got, I recently got, I got into this thing called X3 bar. Are you familiar with this? Is it, is it like, like bar three or no, I, I don't know what that is. I don't is. know what bar three is. Yeah. I don't know a lot of things. You know probably more than I know. I don't know, but yeah. it's with it's with bands. It's, it's a lot of banded work. And then I'll kind of balance that with I'll do like week to week. I'll do like every other week. And then I do kettlebells the other time. But I do try to be really mindful of you know, body posture and that kind of thing. And I get worked on and, you know, try and be as symmetrical as I can. And but yeah, the X three is really interesting. I had one a number of years ago and then my father-in-law came to visit and my wife gave it to my father-in-law. So that I lost my, <laughs> You're like, what? yeah, and it, it's one of the more expensive ones, like the kits, you know? So I tried some of the cheaper ones. They weren't as good. So I just, I recently just, I just, it's like, I got to get another one. So I went, I went and got another one. I, I really like them though. They're really, they, they're really good. So nice. That's what I do. What, what do you do? I'm a big Pilates proponent. Pilates so is I, great. Yeah. When I was a PT in California, you know, I was, I was lucky, you know, I, I started learning that and using it on some of my PT patients. And then when we moved up to Tacoma, I got certified through BASI, which is like one of the big Pilates organizations. And now I don't really have time to teach it, but, you know, I try to do it myself, you know, 
two or three times a week. And I, I, I'm, you know, have a lot of people in the community that I am friends with and, you know, try to support everybody's studios. <laughs> yeah, really? Wow. You, you just love school. The, the dental, <laughs> dental school, PT, you know, I know. Get served, served on Pilates. You just, <laughs> man, you, you, you don't just take a course. You have to get like the, the, I know. the, it's like the, the certification, right? <laughs> it's the perfectionist in me, I guess. <laughs> So, oh, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a unique profile that you have. That's, that's cool. Oh, thank you. I, I, sometimes I look at some of the appliances and some of the things I'm like, oh, I wish I can do some of this stuff, but then I go and see how many employees they have to have and how much equipment they have to have, the dentists have to have. And, you know, it's like, oh, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm okay. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. It's tough to be a dentist nowadays. I think. Oh man. It's so hard on your body. It's crazy. Well, and just the amount of employees you have to have and the, all the toys and stuff you have to, I mean, it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a lot. Yeah. 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 It's tough. So as we're looking ahead 2024, what, what would you like to highlight or give a shout out to? What are you excited about or what goals do you have for this year? Um, I put together a, like I said, part of, part of what I, what I'm really passionate about is, is I said, I've, I've been kind of fortunate enough to, to learn a lot about the dental orthodontic world. And then, you know, kind of coming from the chiropractic background. And I really want, I just feel like the, those two need to come together more. I just think you get a lot better outcome, especially in cases of, of craniofacial pain. But I mean, really, anytime you're trying to find a neutral bite, you know, for, as an orthodontist, I mean, I don't think it could only help them and make it easier for them to rule out, you know, to, to get the body more, more symmetrical, but also to get all the, you know, the myofunctional stuff together. So I put together kind of an online learning platform called Classiva. And so that's what I'm focused on right now. I just put all the SOT courses online. So those are a lot more accessible for that group. And then we're putting together a, a cranial dental TMD certification for chiropractors. And then we're also creating one for dentists, just awesome. kind of informing them about what the other one does, how to work together, like what's realistic, you know, sometimes as chiropractors, we think we can fix everything, you know, we can't like, this is what's realistic. Like this is where you might need help. And then the, like you said to the dentist and orthodontist, just how do you work together? What can you expect? You know, and, 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 you know, we don't need to know everything about each other, what we're doing, like details, but just, it really helps to just have a big picture of like what's possible you know, how to refer to each other, how to work with each other. And I think that's putting, putting those kind of things out there is really important just to said, kind of bridge that gap. So that's, I've been working on that a lot. So that's kind of my, awesome. my goal. Well, yeah. we'll definitely put that in the show notes. And like I said, links to your practice website to your, you know, I don't know how much social media you do, but definitely your Instagram and all of that. Yeah. So where people can find you. So, Great. and I'm definitely going to refer patients to you. I think that's amazing that we're so close, like 45 minutes away. So I know it's a small world as we were talking off camera beforehand. Yeah. I'm glad we our, our, our paths uh, crossed. I said, I'm shocked that we haven't, you know, seen each other or heard about each other sooner. So yeah, it's a, it's yeah. kind of a small world with TMD. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm so happy you're, you're, you're right around the corner. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for being on the show. This was like a really fun conversation. Like I said, I love having the chiropractic perspective. And we'll, like I said, we'll link all that stuff in the show notes. And thank you so much. And happy holidays to you and uh, happy new year, right? Hey, thank you very much. You too. Thanks so much for joining us for another great episode of Jaw Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Lamberton. And don't forget to leave us a review and subscribe to our show so you don't miss an episode. And if you'd like to be a paid subscriber, please check out our Patreon account. Your donation goes a long ways to helping us support the show and continue to bring amazing content. Stay humble, stay curious, and see you next time.